Couch is comfy. It right. is comfy. I'm going to do the intro. Yeah, you guys are good. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Dying to Talk. Episode 13 is here. Got a very special guest today. I'm very excited for you guys to meet her. Um, somebody who I got to know, not all too super well, but a new friend here to uh, Spencer, Kara, and myself. And uh, pretty pretty cool individual, I got to say. I'm, I'm excited for this episode. We got Ayana Davis. How you doing? I'm great. How are you? I can't complain. How was your weekend? It was all right. Really chill. Yeah. Relaxed. Yeah. Not, nothing too crazy going on? No, nothing too crazy. Thank Just God. Just chilling. All right. Yeah. All right. Cool. Cool. It's a beautiful Monday. I, Karen and I went to this uh, like horror film convention yesterday. Yesterday. Was it yesterday? Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Yeah. That was interesting. We like the people watch. You so. like horror? Yeah, I mean, like, I'm not like a crazy, like, hey, have you seen the 1962 version of this film? Like, but, you know, like, I enjoy, like, the, I think what attracts me the most to horror is, like, the character designs of things and just, like, the visual. Yeah. I can't, I'm not like a crazy, I have a friend of mine, Colin, he, he lives and breathes horror. Like, that's his, his whole wardrobe. His, shout out to Colin. But, um, do you like horror movies? It depends because, uh -huh. you know, you have like anxiety for the whole thing mm -hmm. and then sometimes it delivers and sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. So. Well, the one thing when I started working in film, horror movies instantly not, are not terrifying to me anymore. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, well, I know how that was made. Or, mm -hmm. But it's like I can imagine like there's probably a guy behind that door like just Shh, quiet guys were rolling, you know, but um, every once in a while, like. I have, I have a lot of dreams and nightmares, but sometimes it'll feel like, oh, I'll wake up the next day and I'll be like, I dreamt this. I seen this in a movie. I seen this already. And I can make that. I can mm -hmm. make this. I'm not scared. But yeah, other than that, weekend was pretty good. Um, yeah, let's jump right into it. Are you are you ready for are you ready for whose pants are these? Sure. Are you ready? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. All right, Ayana. Opening segment. Whose pants are these? Um. Well, they're mine. Obvious, yeah. Yeah. All right. Where'd you get them? They're really cool. Um, I think I got them from Fashion Nova. Okay. You know, Slay. you see those like those like Instagram models wearing them, mm -hmm. and then they just make you want to buy them, even though you're not gonna look like they look in them. But you're just like, well, I'm gonna get them anyway. So I, I think that's where I got them from. Okay. Right. You know, when they have those free shipping sales, they they, they get you there. That's how they, they get you. Yeah, they and then rope you want to. You're like, well, I have to get them because they, they ship for free, and then they give you free <laughs> next day shipping. So you're like, well, now I really have to get them because you get free next day shipping. So. And then they hit you with the if you leave your email, you get ten percent off on yeah, top of that. But then they harass you because mm -hmm. if you put them in your cart and you don't buy them immediately they email you or they text you and they're like these are gonna sell out soon you better get them so yeah, yeah. i i mean i'm not i don't shop in fashion nova clearly <laughs> but every once in a while I'll, I'll i do the same thing i'll be like oh what spring sale well I, I might as well i'm here the other day um i was at work and a friend of mine sent me a link for like a fingerboards like a little skateboards like yo they're having a warehouse sale and i'm like i don't need anything and then i was looking at all the prices i was like all right i guess i'll buy one thing sixty dollars later uh i put my debit card information in which i'm not going to share my debit card information i'm not going to make that mistake twice i'm just kidding mine I'm, is all stored in my phone so go. that that doesn't that's not instant good. one click shop yeah. no <laughs> yeah yeah it's terrible but you know what though it puts the whole outfit together i, I I'm, I'm digging the pink thank you it's, it's thank very you. i try i try it's oh yeah, it's barbie yeah yeah was that the inspiration do you like do you go because i know Every time I see you, you're like color coordinated out. Yeah. Do you have like colors that you just like cycle through? Like, all right, it's Monday. I'm going to do this color. Um, No, sometimes I'll pick out what glasses I'm going to wear oh, yeah. and I'll go around that. Or sometimes I'm just like, okay, this is the color I want to feel like today. And oh. since I'm a painter and an artist, uh -huh. everything is just color for me. So, yeah. I mean, if I didn't know you I, and I saw you walking down the street, I'd be like, she has me some type of artist. Yeah. Like, there's no way she works like a regular job. I don't even care if I match. I'm just like, yeah. color, color, color. Hell yeah. Me, on the other hand, wearing the old faithful, the gap khakis. <laughs> Gray. New color. I don't think I've ever worn these on this show. Well, you know, my dad wouldn't know that because he's colorblind. Really? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> like, can't see any color He at can all? see, like, shades, but, like, uh -huh. he can't tell the difference between, like, green and blue. Damn. And, like... He had a pink laptop and didn't know it was pink. <laughs> Ooh, he probably. <laughs> he probably was like, "Oh, what? This laptop's on clearance? I can't imagine why." It's like, I, like for a long time, I, I I didn't even ask him about it. I was just like, "Why does he have a pink laptop?" And then I was like, "Oh yeah, I keep forgetting. <laughs> He's colorblind." That's so funny. I had a teacher 
in sixth grade, Mr. Buxton, and he was colorblind. And one day, he always color coordinated Jordan's shirt, watch, everything. One day, he's just, we were joking around, like, did something happen? Like, did you lose your clothes in a flood? He goes, why? He had, like, purple, orange, brown, green. And he, he was like, no, I'm colorblind. Like, I just didn't lay everything out or whatever. And I'm just like, wow, I didn't didn't know that. I know dogs are colorblind, but then they like to learn that people. But colorblindness is different for each person, mm-hmm. too. Like, uh, you, some people can't see certain color, and some people can't see any colors at all. It's it's. It's interesting. interesting. It is interesting. And that concludes whose pants are these? Okay. All right, Ayana, you ready for the toughest question of your life? Yes. Where are you from? I'm from Westchester County, New York. Okay. All right. Westchester. Where's Westchester? It's about. Oh, I know where Westchester is. That way. Yeah. You got to go across the little bridge. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You went to school in Westchester? Yes. Whoa. What was that? I didn't really like it. You didn't like school like at all? No, not really. Um... It sucked. I hated it. The mm. only thing I liked was art class. I could tell. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say, you must have liked art class. I hated it, yeah. Okay. All elementary school, middle school, high school, just couldn't stand it? Couldn't stand it. I I liked art class and photography class, and that was it. Was it because, like, the kids, or was it just, like, I want to be drawing? Why am I learning about the Louisiana um, Purchase? I believe, well, I was... Um, undiagnosed autistic Uh i wasn't diagnosed until i was an adult so i had like i didn't have a lot of social skills and i also had you know anxiety i didn't know i had anxiety gotcha so i just i struggled every single day and and oh yeah i just wanted to be drawing all day why can't i just go to art class why can't i was in chorus i can't sing though but i was in chorus okay um we did plays why can't i just go do my plays oh yeah yeah. um i did photography why can't i just go do photography i never use none of that math as long as i got my debit card and i could shop i'm good with that that's it so it's just (laughs) i I just i didn't i didn't like school yeah i i feel you on that one for sure like i i like the social aspect of school the most could care less about what we're learning like like hey guys did you guys watch regular show last night you know but it's like the teacher would be like mike pay attention to this that'd be something i don't care about maybe i should have paid attention i'd have a better job i don't know but um so art class that was right away off rip you you found art was your thing drawing painting what um sculpting almost everything everything um drawing painting when I got to high school, my high school art teacher actually took me out of his art class because he said, I don't want to change your art style. So he wow. put me in his photography class. So that's how I got into his photography class. But I had already sold art by the time I got to high school. I Damn. sold my first piece when I was seven years old. My aunt was a painter. She uh-huh. took me to an art show. Okay. And she put a few of my pieces in the art show and they sold there was a woman there uh, who was trying to get her to go down on the prices. And she was like, nope, this is the price. So she was like, okay. Heckling at an art show? Yes. People, heckling a seven-year-old. <laughs> hey, listen, lady. I'll give you 13 bucks for the butterfly. She was like, no, this is the price. And she was like, okay. And then she brought it. It's she like, bought. Actually, she bought two of them. Okay. She probably felt bad. She was like, well, now I feel bad because I heckled. Mm-hmm. That's impressive. Seven years old. Yes. I know some fully adult artists who have done shows and have never sold a piece. So that's like, that's pretty cool. Where did, like... Now, obviously, when when, we're, you, when you're a little kid, I was the same way. My dad would make me like draw and like just whatever, but I never really took to it as much. Was there something specific that you saw, or you said your aunt was a painter? So mm-hmm. was it like come from a family inspiration? Like, how did you really get into um, art? I've I've always drawn. Like even before I knew she was an artist, mm-hmm. I would draw. Like my dad said he would go to meetings and he'd open up his notes and there'd be drawings all over his notes and everybody would be laughing at him so i feel like that was probably my first form of communication gotcha like even when i it was hard for me to communicate with words i knew that i can sit down and paint a picture i can sit down and draw a picture so for me it was always like my the easiest way for me to communicate so as far back as i can remember i it was always art some gotcha. form of art okay whether it was painting drawing dancing theater anything that that was that was always my go-to for everything oh that's dope yeah i that's amazing. Yeah. Um, I really liked art until I had a fourth grade art teacher that like screamed at me and I'd never <laughs> wanted to, I like turned away. We were making like little clay pots for mother's day and I'm, I didn't put enough glaze before I went in the kiln. Uh-huh. And my art didn't come out right. And she yelled at me for it. 
Miss Allen. It, it wasn't for her, so why exactly. she get so mad? I was doing my own interpretation of a clay pot. And you can't be wrong when you make art. Mm-hmm. My my father is a really good. Like he could draw. Like he was a. I don't know what it's called, but like when you start, you know, like when you draw things, you do like the shapes first, and then you fill it in with like the details. And but he would he can draw anything. Like we would be watching like baseball games, and he just go, boom. That's and then cool. I try to copy that, and I get so mad because I couldn't do it. But then. In second grade, I remember in second grade, me and Joe Reyes used to like draw our favorite superheroes and then cut them out because we weren't allowed to bring toys to school. So our way around it was drawing the toy and then cutting it out and having a little like paper guys. But then if the teacher caught us, she'd rip them up. Hmm. So you followed on, you you stayed with art all the way up till high school. Did you go to college? Um, I went for about two years and then I had, I had a dance program okay. and they... Um, they competed in um, amateur night at the Apollo. Wow! And um, they won. So I was like, "Well, I can't go to school because I stopped going to school because they yeah. were going back to compete." So I stopped going. So I only did one semester at um, Westchester Community College, and then I was like, "Well, I can't go back because my team is competing." So you were dancing in the team. I did dance the first week. I didn't dance wow. the second week because I was just too busy running around and doing everything okay. else. So damn. Um, yeah, I didn't even know that. See, like. <laughs> And you sit in acting class, like, all shy and bashful, and you got this amazing story, a resume probably longer than all three of ours combined. Spencer can dance. Really? No. You oh. can't. Not at all. I danced in Disney World. That's my claim to fame. My senior year, we got, like, through, the, like, some school program, we had to go down to Disney, and they needed three guys. So me, James Lopez, who was another guest last season, and this guy Mason, we were the only dudes and James is a phenomenal dancer. Mason and I, I mean, Mason, I don't know. I'm not trying to speak for you, bro, if you're out there. But I <laughs> I rolled my ankle really bad the, oh. at a rehearsal. And G- Goofy was at a rehearsal. <laughs> Swear to God. And he came in in character and wanted to watch us dance. And then I rolled my ankle. And this guy dropped character, like, in the Goofy ma- helmet. And was like, dude, are you okay? Wow. Well. And then went right back to me like, oh, yep. Uh, I was like. <laughs> Dude, you should be fired for that. You you're not supposed to drop character, and that was my only claim to fame was dancing in Disney World, Disney Springs. No, my dancers they did a lot. I just and they did so much that I can't really remember all the things that they did. They like they were on ABC Family, um, they were on the Disney Channel, they were on BET. Um, what was the name of the group? Uh, the Stajets. That Stagets. was one of the groups. Okay. Um, some of them were unnamed because mm-hmm. they just did separate projects, and I was just their choreographer. Um, they opened for like older like rap groups like Jada Kiss and Fabulous. They opened for A Marie. Um, who else did they open for? Can you help me over there? Um, <laughs> they they danced on 106 in Park. Oh, sick. Um, they met Sierra. They met. Um, well, he's in trouble now, but they met Diddy. Oh, <laughs> he didn't Diddy. get close to them though, good, so they all good. safe. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they 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 really done a lot. Okay, all right, wow. So you were doing that. What what was like the year like year time frame of that? We're talking like twenty what? About all of that stopped about ten years ago. Okay, ten years ago. So yes. two thousand twelve. Yes. No, oh my god, two thousand when I when I started doing my books again. <laughs> gotcha. So what? Yeah, that's actually that was gonna be my next question. So, was it you? I I know you sold you, you sold your first piece at age seven. Yes. Mad props to you. When did you start uh, illustrating? Yes. When did you start doing that for like books? I know you're okay. drawing, but like, when did that come about? So I started illustrating around the time that I stopped dancing. Okay. So I didn't do both of them at, at the, the same, same time. time. Okay. Um, and I right off the bat, I did 10 books with an author. Didn't mm-hmm. work out. I don't promote the, the Bill's books anymore. But I did 10 books with one author. And then from there, like other authors just became interested mm-hmm. in my work. And then I put four coloring books out on my own with just nice. my artwork in it. Um, most of the books that I illustrate, they like, they're for like representation, inclusion, diversity. I draw a character with limb differences. Mm. I've made characters with vitiligo, um, albinism, yeah. and you know things of that nature. Um, my latest book that I did, I'm autistic and I'm phenomenal. It's a book about a little black girl who's autistic, and it just, 
you know, shows the world how she views life and the things that she's gone through. So um, I just got back into illustrating about a year ago after I didn't do it for almost 10 years. Wow. I mean, looking at, because I looked at, you know, Instagram and the books you have on Amazon, you if you told me it took a 10 year gap from illustrating, I would, I would be like, there's no way. Yeah. I really got back into it last, last July. I put six books out in one month. Wow. What did I do last July? (laughs) Kara's birthday was last July. (laughs) That's something to celebrate. We did something last July. I don't remember what it was. Oh, we did. a Yeah. We, I made We made a movie. That's cool. I'd rather write books though. That's way, you know, drawing. I can't draw. I can kind of draw. Yeah. Growing up, did you have any favorite book series? Um, Not really. No. I, I was kind of like always in my own world. Okay. So, you know, like I, there's a lot of movies that like I never saw. And people were like, I can't believe you never saw that. I'm like, well, I was in like the the dance world and the theater world. Yeah, yeah. So I wasn't really into like the TV world. So more show like Broadway stuff is your, is like, your thing? We did like pl- school plays and uh-huh. like high school plays. And then like, and I don't even remember the names of them. But I know this one play, I, I played like this really evil witch. It was a Christmas play. And I had to sing a song. And, and this, I don't know. My dad said some guy has the video, but I don't know who he is. But I was just always into like that type of thing like the theater and the the dance world so i was never like home to be watching tv and watching tv yeah. shows like so there are like classic movies and people are like you never seen that i'm like yeah i saw it like last year they're like but that came out 15 <laughs> years ago i'm like i know but 15 years ago i was dancing 15 years ago i was doing 15 theater years ago, you were stunting on stage and drawing <laughs> books that's you guys are saying like i was busy 15 years ago you got way too much time watching fucking movies yeah I, I just i i never saw that shit sorry yeah she never seen that shit not sorry not sorry that's i mean i'm saying. not saying that that shit is shit but no no i yeah, just I never saw saying. that shit you're, right. saying. you're grinding you're busy you're hustling yeah. doing all the, i mean all the books all the dancing i didn't know about the dancing that's really interesting yeah that's... i was a choreographer for a long time oh, wow. but i can't do that stuff now like maybe when i get back into shape i'll be able hey, to if, do if it if it took you 10 years to get back but... into drawing 10 years how long how long ago did you stop dancing um, I've been off and on for like okay. a couple years. It's never too late. Uh, I gotta lose some weight first. <laughs> Me too. I was, I'm gonna stay on the topic, but I was in pain <laughs> in rehearsal and well, in class. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was doing little exercises we did. I was like, next, please, because I'm out of breath. <laughs> Can we sit down, please? Context for those of you who are wondering what we're talking about Ayana, myself, and Spencer are all in the same acting class. Uh, she was also in the same acting class with me, Spencer, and Kara. Uh, last time I was talking about acting. Context. That's all I'm going to say. Sign up if you want to know more. I don't know. what. Should I plug them? No, I'm just kidding. Um, no free advertising. No free ad- Yeah. Only paid advertisements. Facts. So every major franchise in this <laughs> studio. Mortal Kombat, fans, <laughs> Disney. They're not Disney. Tony Hawk. I'm coming for you. You owe me a, you owe me a fucking check, buddy. <laughs> Finding art, dance, performance, a, a culmination of all three, did you find it difficult to balance all three of them at the same time or you were just like going with whatever or it seems like, I mean, it seems like you know what you're fucking doing by just telling me um, all the stuff that you, you do. It wasn't hard because it was kind of all that I knew. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't have no social skills. Gotcha. So it was just like. I know I knew how to draw, so I knew how to navigate the world that mm-hmm. way. I I did dance, I knew how to navigate the dance world. I did theater, I knew how to navigate that. So that was just th- those were the things that I knew how to deal with, and I knew mm-hmm. how to tolerate. Like it's hard, small talk, I'm terrible at it. Mm-hmm. You know, talk to me too long, I might pass out. Like <laughs> <laughs> it's hard for me to keep a conversation going unless it's it's about art. You yeah, know? I talk about art all day, talk about dance all day, talk about acting all day, but just small talk and just normal life situations things like that i'm not good at but navigating life through art is it just comes naturally for me because Mm. that's what i've always done like i've always been in my own like art bubble like um like something that was difficult for me i have my own day in westchester county which was a holiday dedicated like yeah my own day like it just it just it just passed it was actually oh it happened already yeah it was april april 26 april 26 well it's every year april 26 what's it called ayana day ayana davis day in westchester county new york damn so i have a proclamation so like when they city too or no 
Huh? You get the key to the city? They don't give those in Westchester oh, okay. County. I don't know why. So Maybe they're probably, just not as cool as New York City. Like you can, I don't know. We'll shut the traffic down for 20 minutes. You can walk around. <laughs> but we had like, a, they had like a ceremony uh-huh. and they give you the ceremony. But when they did it for me, we had like, there was like a camera crew that followed me around for two months and they did a documentary. Damn. So Where can we find the documentary? Because now um, I want to watch it. I'll find it and yeah. I'll send it to you. It's on YouTube, but I don't know what it's called because it was so long ago, but I'll find it for gotcha, you guys because gotcha. somebody has a link. But so the camera crew followed me for two months with my dance program mm-hmm. because I taught um, youth in underserved communities. So that's why I got my proclamation for my work with mm-hmm. under underserved youth. So, but the ceremony, it was just so hard for me to like get up and speak and say thank you. And that was like the hardest part. And I was like, I don't want this. I don't want to do this. And I got honored at the United Nations and it was really hard for me to get up and say thank you there too. I almost passed out and it was like- Sorry, half the people don't speak English at the United (laughs) Nations. They was like, can you come up and say a few words? And I didn't want to say anything. And I was just like, I didn't want to say anything. You know what? The next time you get invited to the UN, they'd be like, would you like to say something? You'd be like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> they'd be like, that's fucking gangster. That's gangster at, the, at the UN. I didn't want to say anything. At also, the UN. Leave me the fuck alone. No, but. that's, you know what though? That's like, I respect that though. Cause that, I, you have your own holiday. You, you were honored at the United Nations and you're, you're, you can't do small talk, but like you thrive with dance, theater, like all the cool shit like <laughs> most normal people can't do like like people work like regular jobs just talk about the weather talk about the latest game and then it's like conversation I'll see yeah you that's why like when people come with like the autism jokes i'm just like don't play yourself because there's a lot of things i will destroy you in yeah. so don't play yourself all right do you think you can beat spencer and like uh i don't know spencer are you good at anything He's good at a lot of things. <laughs> like, like I mean, like what? Well, something specific. Like, uh, he's he's like, you build a Lego set he's house. really good at building. Oh Legos. no, 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 no! That's too many pieces. Too, well, what if it's like one of the small ones you get, like the self checkout line by like Target, like one of the little like I guess there's not really. I sets, think I would though. lose my patience. Yeah. Yeah. He he has like this crazy room of Legos. Him and his brother. Oh, go, like, and well, where were we at when you guys had a whole room made of um. Oh no, that's our office. The Pokemon. That stuff. was really cool. Yeah, that was that's our office. Well, the Pokemon room specifically is not our office. It's not there anymore. Now there's a new show. But that was uh, our boy David Lionheart. He made all that. That was really cool. Yeah. Pokemon. I think I took a small video of it too. That was cool. We have to charge you for that. No, no, I'm keeping okay, it. Okay, all right. Um, yeah, with small. T- it's funny. I work my day job. I work with like a lot of older people, and sometimes a small talk. Or, like, sometimes a joke range. I'm like, where's the line? Because sometimes these guys say something really fucked up and really offensive. <laughs> and then, like, I'll fire back and be like, yeah, me too. And they'll be like, whoa, that was too far, buddy. And then, or it's just like, see the game yesterday? No. Yeah, me neither. It's supposed to be a nice Saturday. It's like, oh, my. I want to. We were at. I forgot where we were. And somebody's. I'm not going to say who it was. They just kept talking to me about Taco Bell for like 20 minutes straight and i was i was dying inside like i love having conversations with people you probably tell because i never shut the fuck up but i can only stretch a 20 minute conversation about taco bell so far i don't think like something like that i don't know what what i would do i i would probably walk away which is extremely rude (laughs) like or i would like blow up which is even worse but those are like the only two options that i have in a situation like that is to walk away or to lose my shit. <laughs> or to lose your... Yeah. Honestly, I, I, I applaud you for... I, I want to walk away so bad sometimes when I have these conversations, but I just... Uh, I can't do it. Because I wonder if when I'm talking to people, if they want to... Like you right now, do you want to explode by listening to me talk? No. We paid her to say that, by the way. Ba- getting back... now, So now you're back illustrating. Yes. You're doing that. You're back in the theater a little bit. Yeah. Um. What are, what are your like... Currently, what are you like navigating doing after your, your illustrious holiday? Which, thank you for telling us, we would have easily went to Westchester County and partied. <laughs> I'm kind um, of jealous. Well, <laughs> well, the holiday is every year, so right. I, you know, I don't really make a big deal out of it anymore. Um, but you know, I'm I'm enjoying class. Um, 
I'm looking forward to working with you guys, mm. see where this goes. Um, I'm about to start another book with a new author. Well, actually, two new books with two authors. One of them, she's a really new author, so I'm kind of going to be guiding her on this journey. Mm. I'm looking forward to that because she's an amazing person. Because, you know, I've had horror stories where I've worked with, like, evil authors. <sighs> And, you know, they're, like, screaming at you. And, really? Yeah. I don't like this. Do it this way. So Would, would you care to share? We don't have to. but No. Uh, right. that, that's really, yeah, you know, sometimes right, okay. you just work with people who they kind of don't respect you as an artist. Mm -hmm. um, like, you can put your all into something and it's still not enough for them. But I'm just like, but you can't do it. You can't even draw a straight line. But, th you know, there's a way to say everything. If you don't like it, I will yeah, do. Yeah. I can do the revisions. You don't got to shit on what I did. I can do the revisions. So it's just like now I'm very selective in yeah, who absolutely. I work with. Uh, you know, it looks yeah. great on my resume that I did 10 books for somebody, but yeah, yeah. I'll never work with you again. There you go. That Yeah. I mean, I've worked with tons of people that I would, st same, never work with <laughs> again. But also, too, being able to, like, control that be like no i to get to be like that customer said the other day it's like oops sorry i only do high-end budget stuff or whatever it's like being able to do your own thing at your discretion is the coolest thing in the world and it seems like you got that down like yeah pretty well i mean from listening to all these stories you're telling me i'm jealous and i'm like damn i need to get my shit together <laughs> <laughs> this might be called the like dying to talk with Ayanna Davis. You know, no, but I've always I've, I've just always enjoyed it. Like even with the theater, I only had one bad experience, and that mm -hmm. was with um I was working with a theater group in Westchester County, and um it was just this, this one one assistant. He was one of the acting assistants. It was our first meeting. It was when we were doing the Wiz, and um you know the big dance scene at the end when Evelyn like yeah. melts into the toilet. Okay, so I had to choreograph and teach all the kids that scene, and he was like, "You're never gonna get them to do that." Scene like that and they, they nailed it it was perfect it was that, like yeah. eat shit and it, it was just perfect and what do you have to say afterwards when he didn't you say did anything he couldn't, even look, he, he couldn't even look of course. at me he couldn't even look at me hell yeah he didn't even say good job nothing he couldn't even look at me I was like I was staring at him too and I don't even do the eye contact and I was like ooh <laughs> hell yeah that's <laughs> yo Kara who are you when you did the whiz that statement alone <laughs> Her school, was it Cornwall that made my, you? My high school did the whiz. They're mo it's like a 90% white high school, <laughs> by the way. It, it's a whole thing, and everyone who did it was really not proud of it. I was Eveline, actually. <laughs> you were Eveline? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. She gets on my, did they flush you down the toilet? Like, how did you guys do that part? Um, I walked down the steps oh, okay. as they did a, like, smoke. It was really embarrassing. <laughs> what? I walked down the stairs. <laughs> and they made me and a, they made me and the other girl share a costume. So, like, how come you guys didn't do the Wizard of Oz? Exactly, right? <laughs> I, I don't uh, understand. That's what every single person in that cast said. And do you know? Do you know how bad this was? And I don't mind sharing this because that director isn't there. Yeah. The only black kid he cast as a lead was the Tin Man, who was painted silver. So they silver faced him. I mean, it just would have made sense to do the Wizard of Oz. No, yeah, like, we ha on. we had this realization a while ago, and I don't understand where it comes from. But high school court, we I we, we were all Kara and I, Spencer and I went to the same high school. Context: Kara didn't go to the same high school as us. Chorus teachers often have their predominantly white chorus sing like black slave songs <laughs> Sorry. no like no, it's and like, I, all always with like why are we singing like they would be like no you have to say it like this it's like this sounds really like i went to newburgh so it, we weren't like it wasn't like cornwall where mm -hmm. it was like mostly white but newburgh had like a good mix but still man like I don't get that. I don't understand. Like, yeah, why didn't they do the Wizard of... No, laugh. It is it is like really weird. It is just so crazy. Th how many times do you like All County or Nismo or whatever? It'd be like a song that's clearly yeah, like always not... Always All County. Yeah. Always yeah. All County. I don't know what it was. It was really weird. Never got that. I think... I don't know. It is. You can sing anything else. Yeah. What a... What a fucking... People are weird, man. People are really interesting. Um... Did you have a favorite song to sing in chorus? 
Um, no, I didn't. I just went there and sang off key and enjoyed the 40 minutes I was there and went to the next class. That sounds a lot like somebody else I know. <laughs> this guy. This guy right here. <laughs> but I, like, the thing is, like, I want to do voice acting, too. But Me I can't too. sing. But, like. You need to sing to do voice acting. Do a no, commercial. No, I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah. But, but that's the, the, the funny thing. But, like, I, I just could not sing. But I had to sing in the plays. But I could sing when I was a little girl. But okay. I can't sing now at, at all. It's never too late, Ayana. Yeah. It's never too late. <laughs> Ten year hiatus from singing. I used to have a really good voice, and then I was trying to sing a song in the car after I dropped her home yesterday, and I was like, what happened to me? I used to be so good. I was never that good. But, um, yeah, I think I still got it. I think you still got it, too. Don't doubt yourself. You can do anything. You're phenomenal. Thank you. All the shit you're telling me is just like, what? It's like, <laughs> how the fuck do you do all that stuff? It, it really is. like impre- I'm not just saying that just to blow smoke up your ass. Like That is crazy Thank to you. be able to, to do any of that stuff. I can't write a book. I can't draw for shit thank you thank um, you thank you what, what do you I know obviously like your your illustration is like your would you say like your day job but has, did you prefer performing over illustrating they're both very different worlds um <clears throat> excuse me no you're good I since I I taught um for so long because I just I I felt like the, the kids needed something to do the kids needed an outlet mm. Um, but when I started to get back into the illustrating, I was like, well, I want to do something else. I want to, um, I still need something else creative. Mm -hmm. I still, there was still an itch for something. So I was like, all right, well, you know, let me take some acting classes. Let me just take some theater classes. So, um, I do enjoy performing. Um, Mm -hmm. I have a TV and film acting coach uh, and she's, she's amazing. And she, um, she's really hard to be in scenes with because she just kills it every time like i she's so intimidating but um i I do enjoy performing it's just another way to express myself um again since i have problems with communication that's just another way to escape until you escape into the character so that that really helps me out a lot with my social skills and things of that nature yeah no i that was damn this is like an amazing episode already (laughs) we even like get there right but um yeah i especially with drawing and and illustration it it is a very like private you you know it's like you're it's just you the paper the pen whatever and then theater is like look at me so like the fact that you're able you can hang in both is amazing i can't draw i have no problem filling up a room with talking about taco bell stories all day (laughs) or something you know so that's great was there any so no TV you didn't watch movies or TV so other than your aunt inspiring you to draw there wasn't really like anything that caught you like for me I watched this one movie when I was a kid and I was like I want to be movie I want to be a movie person like I saw I I, like my grandma would watch TV Mm -hmm. but I was never like I want to grow up and be on the the, the soap operas nothing like that it was just like um, I think I just enjoyed the art Mm -hmm. so then that's why I wanted to do it it was never like I want to be famous it was I just want to do the art yeah Yeah. who wants to have a normal boring day job at a desk (laughs) I don't I couldn't I would not be able to thrive in that environment I never saw myself doing anything other than art like I really never saw myself doing anything else and you I I never saw myself existing in the world doing anything else damn it's amazing because I, with myself, or, and I'm sure anybody that's listening or the other two people in the room with us, um, it is very tough to stay on the path of, like, being an artist because there's so many factors that come in and, and, and deter. It could be financial. It could be, you know, support system. It could be a, a whole myriad of things. Um, becoming yeah. an artist, you always had, like, full family support by that? Or? Yeah, my dad. Yeah, gotcha. still. Nice. Like, because, like... Um, I don't know if you knew this. I I paint and I customize clothing. Like I paint denim jackets and you know I, I make like little kids clothing. So yeah. when I was really doing that actively, um, like some weeks you get like one order, some weeks you get twenty orders. Yeah, yeah. So it was just like you know some some weeks it's like literally you're the struggling artist. Then the next week it's like you have more orders than you can handle. Yeah. So it's always just like you know. But my dad's always like, okay, well that's all right. You know, next week get more orders. Next week you do this. Next week you do that. When I was um a few years ago, I had an agent for 
um, commercial and TV, but I ended up, you know, my health wasn't the greatest. So I asked to be released from my contract, but I was getting a lot of requests and a lot of callbacks. I don't think I booked anything, but I got a lot of callbacks mm -hmm. and a lot of auditions, which is a win still. Absolutely. But, um, I asked to be let go from my contract, but they said, you know, when you get better, we'll, we'll take you back. So yeah. I'm working to get there. Oh yeah. But, um, you know, he's always just like an audition is a win. So he's always there with the full support, full support for everything. Um, when we came up here, um, I was looking for an acting class. He helped me. We, we found the class. Of course, you guys know he drops me off. He picks me up. So he's here today. So I've yeah, always had always had that support. Hell yeah, that's amazing. The the um, I've met a lot of people that are still pursuing their creative passions, but they they don't necessarily have the the support. And it, that it's definitely tough and rough, but it it's amazing and it's a beautiful thing. I. I think I have my family support some days, but I'm not exactly sure. I'm it, it, it's hard to be an adult artist because some people are like, get a real job. Yeah. And that's not a real job. And eh, like, so it is hard because you do have people that will say things to you like that or, or like you're still working on that little project. It's not a little project. People's dreams aren't little things. They're real to them. So, you you know, you still have people that do that to yeah. you and they say like, well, you're an adult now. Do this and you're not going to get it. You need to get a real job and do that. Like, so I don't think people understand like acting is work you get up you go to work yeah. that's your job you know being an artist illustrating a book you're working from some for somebody when you're doing it for somebody else is a deadline that that's your job that is work so if you're not an artist you don't really understand things like that yeah. that's very well said i always find it too with a lot of people that do say those things like oh get a real job are you still doing that it's like it never sounds like a it's never positive when they say that the yeah. way they're delivering <laughs> it it's never positive but to me i always pick up on ooh. Who told you that one? Like once, mm -hmm. who who was the person that told you that? Yeah, and why are you telling me? What was your dream that yeah. somebody shot down and you exactly never, you never ran back to pick it up? Yeah, I. But you know, again too, like some people can be very talented, but if they're not strong minded to keep just trucking along, they can let other people's thought. I, it's happened to me a few times. I mean, my whole life trajectory, or at least what I thought I would be doing, same deal. Like I had people telling me now that I couldn't do it. And then I didn't. I was like, all right, fine. I'll just go do this other thing. And then during the pandemic in college and sorting that whole experience out, I was like, oh, no, like I have to do what I wanted to do this whole yeah. time because it is important to me. And it's like, like pretty much like the way you said it. It's I'm an artist. I'm only going to the only person that's going to see my dream and what I want to do is me. And um, yeah, that's you should write a book. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? No, I no, go for it. No, I, I wanted to ask, like, what's the process of, like, illustrating an, a new book? Um, Just, like, say one more time. Kara's question for uh, Ayana was, what is the process for illustrating a new book? For those, if we didn't, if it didn't clip in. Thank okay. you, producer. Um, so I'll, I'll start with when it's with, with another author and then when it's just me doing it for myself. So when it's for another author, um, they'll reach out to me with their proposal. I'll accept it or I'll decline it. Um, so if I agree to work with them, they'll send me their story and along with their illustrator notes and, um, you know, I'll follow their illustrator notes or sometimes they give me full creative control, which I love absolutely love that those are like the best authors mm -hmm. and um so i'll just do the illustration that goes along with their text i'll send it back to them um they'll either approve it or they'll ask for revisions i usually allow them up to two or three revisions or it's an extra fee um <laughs> and um we just we just go page by page page by page i go follow the illustrator notes send it in revision so it, it's just basically like that and once we get to the end and I give them the, they give me the okay for the approval, that job is finished. Um, when it's me for myself, I work probably backwards. I do the pictures first and then I write the story from the pictures. Ooh, that's Interesting. That's I have a follow up question to that working for yourself, working backwards. Like, y do you find, like, when you're writing a book, I've never written a book context i don't know if you knew that but do you find that going with i want the image first and then everything else will like it kind of i kind of work like that with writing like i sometimes will come up with an idea for like a really cool shot or a really cool visual and then i have to go all right well how do i make this make sense before and after so is that kind of like what you, you do or you just go i'm gonna draw this here 
and then this like what is that specific process of like writing backwards um so i'm like well i'm a visual learner uh-huh. so if i was to write it down first I, I don't think that i would be able to match the image to actually put the drawing down on paper mm-hmm. so for me to put the drawing down first then I can be like, okay, I can put this into words. But if I look at the words first, I'll be like, I don't know if I can put this into an image. So for gotcha. me, it's just like, Okay, yeah. wow, interesting. That's really cool. Um, thank you for that question, Kara. That was a really good question. A Kara, <laughs> Kara just got recently promoted to being an associate producer. Congratulations. On the podcast. So got to put her to work somehow. And then there's Spencer over there. What are you doing on the phone there, Spencer? What are you doing? <laughs> I'm actually looking up. Oh, gotcha. Literally. Yeah. So, so being producer, really hell yeah. He was probably like on Bro, Tinder or something. No, I'm just, I'm, I, well, it's still loading, so it could be looking at Legos. Um, as an artist, what do you, what do you think of our, it's still in its infancy, but what do you think of our setup? No, I really love it because you know, I love, this is so awesome. Really? <laughs> yes, I love that. Like, I would like that on a t shirt. That's gorgeous. Um, I really love it. I love colors. I love a lot going on. This right here is really cool. What I love the, it. Yeah, what, it's really, What, the clams really cool. or the Las Vegas thing? The owl? Yeah. So the owl was actually um, from Aaron's short film because we worked on it, and that was a prop in the short film. And the uh, production designer was like, I don't want it. Do you want it? And I was like, yeah. I always yeah, like to take cool. a little something from like each movie I work on. So. And, you know, I love that. I told you that already. Liu Kang. And it kind of looks like he's kicking Yeah, I know. Legs. That was like the vibe because sometimes you may be kicked right in the head. <laughs> in order for me to like really lock in yes. but yeah the rest of the I mean when we decided when I decided when I was like I'm just gonna do this um, I was like guys let, let's just bring a bunch of stuff and, and put it on a shelf and figure out how, how everything's gonna flow and fit and then I was like but I don't want it to look like my room and then it quite literally looks exactly like a corner of but my room but that's cool because it's you know it's laid back it'll make people comfortable yeah. more chill like they're just having a conversation with exactly. you like they're sitting here with you yeah Exactly, right next to my King Kong and Godzilla, <laughs> my Shrek Buddha that I just got at the <laughs> horror convention, my Among Us. So, you know what Among Us is? No. It's like a, is it an iPhone game? or It's a game where, like, spacemen, one person's, like, it, and they're trying to kill the other spacemen. But it's like a meme. It's like a popular meme. Anyway, I bought this while Kara and I and our friend John Glenn were working on this movie, and I would hide it on set all over the place and see like if if John Glenn could find it. So shout out to John Glenn. Did he find it? Oh, he would find it all the time. I'd hide it in the in the cooler. I'd hide it like I one I really tried to hide it on frame to see if it would make it into the movie. I didn't give like this movie I could care less about. But I was always really afraid like what if they caught me? what if that made it in so I didn't do it. But what's ironic is the other movie John Glenn and I worked in, he's in the background by accident. So maybe I could have done it and nobody would have noticed. But uh, that poster actually came from Michael, our other business partner. I don't believe you met him yet. But you cool. will. You'll see him at some point. Yeah, it was in his dorm. And I was like, let's. We had a different poster there earlier, but this yeah, those is are way like cooler. colors I'd put together. I love that. It's so nice, right? Yeah. I just, don't you, doesn't this make you just go on a pirate ship and just start swashbuckling, you know? Just steal some spices and, and rum and just do some pirate ship. But thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It looks great. Awesome. Um, you've done many podcasts. Yes. I, 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 you were telling me a little bit about that. What, how many have you done? A lot. Four million? So many. Um, over 50, maybe over close to 100. Over 50. Yes. Wow. I've been um, actively doing them since 2020. Damn. All right. A lot of Zoom ones? Yes. Have you ever done one like this setup before? No, this is my first in person. Oh, sweet. Sweet. I think you're the first, you're not, the, you're the second guest who's been on a podcast before. Every other person we've had on has never appeared on a podcast before. So you join a very elite club. Oh, that's cool. If we want to count Kara's like three other times, we every time we try to record something like a new setup, we use Kara's like the test dummy. Like I've been on um, WPIX eleven. I did an interview on there. Damn. <laughs> what was it? Was that? What was that all? Just like a story about um, yourself? It was for my clothes that I design. Uh-huh. I was a featured designer for Harlem Week. Oh, sweet. so we did a, a segment just basically speaking about like the activities that were going to be going on that weekend mm. so um, we showcase some of my designs damn 
I feel like every question you just get progressively more impressive. Well, because I forget about some of the stuff that I've done. But I just love how you casually you <laughs> drop these things. I go, yeah, I did this thing. And that. Like, what's next? Like, did you win an Oscar for best like actress or some shit and no. just did not tell us yet? No. Kara has another question. Okay. We gotta get you a quieter chair next time. <laughs> I think we should just have it on the word rocking chair next time. Because that's a pretty quiet chair. Yeah. This part, will, but you, you perform at the Apollo with your dance team? Yes. Can I, what was it like performing in such a important, histor- like, I would have lost my mind. Um, it they, was... Did, did it I'm gonna repeat the question so it would pick up. Kara's other question was, we're gonna, we're gonna have to get Spencer and you a mic, I yeah. think. Spencer wants to be on the show so bad. I'm not going to let him. Um, the question was, uh, what was it like for Ayana performing at the iconic Apollo Theater? Ayana. Okay, performing at the iconic Apollo Theater in Harlem, New York. Um, it was amazing. Um, it was a, it was a little bit eerie. Um, when I did it, um, my nerves didn't get the best of me because I was kind of like more worrying about like the other dancers, making sure everybody was good. Um, I made their outfits, so I had to make sure like everybody's oh, outfit. Shit. You did the costume. <laughs> yes, <laughs> so I had to make sure their costumes were good. Something interesting: the stage is very small. It looks way bigger on TV, so the stage is very small. So when we got there, I was like, "They're not all even gonna fit on this stage," but it, you know, we worked it out and it worked out. But um, it was amazing. Yeah. See what I mean? You just again casually drop another thing. <laughs> I designed all the costumes and I danced, and it was at the Apollo, the iconic Apollo Theater in Harlem, New York. Losers. Nah, I'm just kidding. That's great. That's damn impressive. You're an impressive person Thank for you. sure. Thank you. What the exact age when she was diagnosed? Okay, so this okay. is going to be a trick question. You, you guys know how old I am? No, not okay, at so, all. Not at all. Okay, so I'll only tell you if you can come five years within, within the, my okay, age. That, okay, I'm not going to lie. Like, the whole fucking Because time. I don't tell people my age, okay. but if you guys can come within five years, right. I'll tell you. Do we all each got to guess? Yes, you do. Before we guess, I just got to say the whole time I'm like, in my head, I'm like, how old is she? I can't figure Because <laughs> I think you're my, our age probably, but I don't now know I don't, how old you guys are. He's 23. Kara's 24, I'm 25. Okay. So I'm going to assume you might be older than me. I'm older than you. I can't believe you're... Yeah. Years old. Yeah, That's do crazy. That. Yeah. yeah. But I am a millennial. I'm a proud millennial. Okay. And All right. we can tell everybody that. All right. She's she's in the millennial generation. But I gentlemen. will tell you why I don't tell my age. Um, I have developmental delays. And what is so, it? Like, um, explain that. if you. Um, it's like learning disabilities. Okay. So I've experienced like bullying because of that mm. and online bullying yeah. and oh well you're such and such age but you act fifteen and you act twelve and you have the mindset of how a, old do they act? Uh, the time yeah, saying and it was actually a, a grown woman who said of that course, to me. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's why I don't flat out and be like I'm such and such age and I'm yeah. isn't it? That's why. Oh okay. Well, fuck that person. <laughs> fuck all those people. I always find that like I. The people that take the time out of the day to comment on so I had somebody call me fat on a YouTube video. First of all, context. The video is was filmed two years prior to its release date and this person called me fat. So it's like you watched oh, a two I hate hour people video. That comment on people's weights. Well the crazy thing is was like this is a two hour long wrestling show and the only thing he took away from it was that and I you were moving a for fat. two hours and somebody I said was only that, in the match for like ten minutes. But well, so I can't move for ten minutes. It's for like a full two hour show and then I was like, damn, I'm fat and then I was like, Wait, no, that video is like from two years ago also who the fuck is that guy? Because I'm the tag team champion. I gained weight from like medications. Not anymore, but I and was. And somebody was like, um, oh my God, you got so big, you gained so much weight. And I'm like, okay, well, I had 300 seizures and didn't die. So I'd rather be fat from medication than not alive. Yeah. You'd be like, yeah, good luck trying to have one seizure. <laughs> yeah, <pussy."> right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it seems, like, uh, it seems like you got the whole blocking the hate out pretty much figured out i mean who really it's tough some people like i said with the being strong-minded 
some people that does get to them it does yeah but. yeah so i'm just like you know like i like when i go on podcasts um i'm like i'm a millennial and that's all i tell them uh-huh. because um just the the negativity um it's, it's wasted energy and Absolutely, I, you yeah. know i'd rather put my energy into the things that i love the art the acting the well, theater. That's, a, that's what i think a lot of people that negativity comes from a place of jealousy almost yeah. all the time and i feel like that's what ages people too uh, absolutely <laughs> absolutely absolutely like if you want to look you got to be positive exactly if you want to look the secret to looking is to be positive <laughs> that's right amen hell yeah well we all got we all got some homework we got to start being positive that's right hell yeah yeah the um online negativity bro is like I, i've talked about this with a uh, previous guest where it is like almost always coming from a place of like uh, hate, obviously, but jealousy mostly yeah. overall. And, it's like, and then there's people like no profile picture. Where's your profile picture? Yeah. Why are you bothering you, me? There's no way you look like that. Just like light blue shape of a man. <laughs> Why are you bothering me? Where's your profile picture? Yeah. What does your username mean? It's just yeah. crazy. Stupid username. My <laughs> thing is like. This is fucked up, but like sometimes if somebody comments something negative and I like click on their profile and it'll be like R.I.P. Mom or R.I.P. Like Grandma, I'm like, ooh, I'm about to get you, bro, because like, but like I, I never, I've never, but no, I will. But like people, <laughs> like people, they they bring you there. Yeah. Like I don't comment on people's appearance, but then you look at people and then you're like, I would never say that, but people take you there. Yeah, they 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 absolutely. bring you, they want to bring you to like the darkest place, and I'm not that type of person, but people really sometimes they, they want to bring you to that place i don't go there but people want to bring you there because what what's going on in your life that you go on the internet and you just picking at strangers who aren't bothering you they're just posting parts of their life that yeah. they're proud of maybe sharing things that might bring you some joy that might put a smile on your face that might teach you something and you spew and hate at them yeah majority of the internet especially social media is just hatred yeah. Everything. There's not one thing. It could be like advertisements for like a brand new watch. Somebody's going to comment, it's fucking stupid. This sucks. My biggest thing was, and I, although I'm not sponsored by them, but Liquid Death, if you ever want to sponsor me. That's really cool. Kara got it for me. That's sick, cool. Right? I never, it's Martha Stewart Liquid Death collection. But, really? Um, yeah, it's got two wicks and the wrist and the can. Oh, yeah. That's cool. You know how many people like shit on Liquid? It's literally just canned beverages flavor not just can it's uh mountain water it's very refreshing they have different flavors but um every time i follow them on instagram i love their marketing their marketing i try to like not rip it off but um see what i did there because of the severed hand but like i love the, the irony of like yeah it's like they had a uh an iced tea that was called like armless palmer named after arnold palmer then they got sued so they renamed it dead billionaire like just to be like fuck you but Every time they post something, people are like, I don't fucking get it. It's literally just water. You guys are so stupid. And I'm just like, you took the time out of your miserable fucking life to comment on a water can. A can of fucking water. Sponsor me a liquid death. It's it's crazy. I mean, sometimes, don't get me wrong, like you said, it brings you to that level. Like, there have been plenty of times people like come at me. There have been. Like a, a there was one person who made like a whole fake account just to try to like fuck with me. And I was like, so you made like, an email, no, bro, you made yep. an account, like you have no life if you did that. Yeah, people, um, you know, I get the autism jokes all the time. You know, people like to call you stupid and slow and retarded. And I'm just like, please don't, please don't do that because I don't know how to stop. Like my dad will tell everybody she's nice until she's not. Yeah. She's the sweetest person until she's not. She's got that squeaky mousy voice, but she will get you. So like, it's just yeah. like, no, cause them, I don't bro. bother nobody. Yeah. I don't bother nobody. I really don't. I stay in my, like I said, I stay in my art bubble. I do my art. I do my advocacy and I mind my business, mm. but it's always somebody who coming from out of nowhere with something crazy to say. Like I, I wrote an article um, for the mighty. They, um, you know, they publish articles about like um health and they have like an autism um platform and it was just basically about um black women being underrepresented in the autism community 
So some psychotic old white guy cursed me out because he didn't like the article. And he was like, look at you, 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 you black bitch making it about black women. I, you making things about yourself. I have two autistic nephews. I'm like, I'm like, okay, but you just made it about yourself mentioning your nephews. So, you know, you, you always and have if you read the article, jackass, it's about <laughs> black women that are underrepresented <laughs> autism, not your nephews that are underrepresented <laughs> autism. Go read exactly. that article. So I'm Unfucking just like, believable. Okay. But like that, like. Especially for that guy, if he could be completely bullshit. You, again, we don't know this dude, but he has two nephews that have autism, right? But he's going, he's attacking somebody else that has autism. Yeah, I didn't get it. Good advocacy, bro. Yeah. Good advocacy. People are fucking stupid, man. Nice way to treat your nephews. Yeah. Who, somebody in the same. Yeah. yeah. I, I. But again, too, probably just comes from a place of like frustration or just, mm-hmm. j- j- I don't know. I, I honestly couldn't tell you, but I mean... Some crazy motherfuckers out there, man. Very crazy. It really is. Liquid death. Sponsor <laughs> me. So, um, back to my original question. Wow, we like we went on such a side path, but it it flowed so well. My original question: um, When you were finally diagnosed, or we got to that point where you were diagnosed, what was like? Did that feel like it made sense to you, or you're just like, huh? Like, how was the coping with that? Um, Not like it's uh, something you have to cope with because clearly you're fucking killing it. You're doing better than all of us in this room, but <laughs> no, you guys are. Yeah, y'all are amazing. Oh, um, it was, it was, it was. Um, I had to process it. I had to accept it because first when they told me, I was like, oh, y'all don't know what y'all talking about. I'm not autistic, uh-huh. but then it started making sense because it um, put a lot of things into perspective. I was like, okay, well, this is this is why you do this. This is why you do that. This is why you used to stare people right in their face and not speak when they said hello to you. Um, this is why you only eat about five foods this is why you have no social skills so a lot of things started making sense to me Uh and um you know i I learned coping skills and i just learned to navigate life a little bit easier Mm -hmm. because i knew what the problem was you know i knew it was wrong you know i don't think anything's wrong but we knew it was there now so it it actually made things a lot easier once i got diagnosed and that um with the art too especially that was just like oh that clicked because Mm -hmm. i mean already you know, like you were saying some things with the communication issues, mm-hmm. but already you're clearly communicating your most inner self through your art. Yes. So that is, uh, yeah, that's always in- uh, interesting. I don't have anybody, um, in my like close circle that has autism or anything. So, um, I had like friends in high school that did. And one of my good buddies from throughout middle school, elementary school on, on, and, um, he was undiagnosed but it all it always like kind of made sense and then he got diagnosed around like i want to say like 10th grade ish and then he kind of was just like oh that makes sense all right go back to the back to the norm so and that could be difficult for some people to receive this new piece of information about themselves that have been with them from the start yeah and but, like even like now talking to my dad sometimes he's like well you know it kind of makes sense why you did this now and it kind of makes sense why you did that it so. makes you like like would you say it kind of makes you even more like hyper aware about yourself more uh, uh, yeah it does and and now i understand myself a little better because i used to be like well why you don't do, why you why you do this why you don't like that so now now i understand why um sometimes I, well I, I understand why now but then i'm still like well damn you you still don't want to talk to people no i don't i don't want to be bothered but at least now i know why <laughs> hell yeah hey that's me that's me some days too you know like just, i don't want to talk to anybody i'm a star <laughs> no pictures yeah no pictures no please. photos no paparazzi to, yeah none nada so let's talk about the you, you do a lot of Ad, is it advocacy advocation what is like the term um, advocacy advocacy yeah. for um autism mm-hmm. talk about that a little bit what's like your i mean um give us that basically whole um yes yeah, so once when i was diagnosed i was in denial i didn't speak about it for a while mm-hmm. um i didn't tell anybody for a long time but once i started to accept it i, I noticed that um there wasn't a lot of representation for black autistic women and um, I also noticed that when I got my diagnosis, we wasn't we weren't really given any guidance. Like um, 
what type of therapies mm-hmm. would help me, what type of treatments would help me. So um, I started advocating for more visibility for black autistic women um, to gain resources, um, to live a better quality of life. Yeah. So that's when I got out there and I started um, telling my story, um, started um, you know guiding people in the right direction if they felt like they were autistic, um, steps that they should take to get diagnosed and um, some of the autistic traits and some of the early signs of autism for parents that um, might think that their children are autistic um, because, you know, there's there's definitely a difference um, between um, black children and white children. Um, black children are diagnosed on average three years later than white autistic children white autistic children um so there's differences in communities um social class um so i just basically um started speaking about about all the different issues in the autism community to bring more awareness to get more acceptance wow and when when did you start like it was like shortly after you were diagnosed you went down that path um it was about four years after four years after Mm -hmm. wow amazing yeah that's that's very admirable like no joke that's I, I like like I've said before, like my whole knowledge on that uh, autism and, and that sort of stuff is very, I don't know, not good. So, but it is always amazing to learn more, and and mm-hmm. I definitely do believe like it, like what you advocate for is something that needs to be expanded upon and and stretched out. Because I myself too, I was like, oh, I didn't know most of the stuff about you know some of the things you were telling me. So yeah, like people, like even people in my family don't really you know, know what autism is. And sometimes even when I told some of my friends that I was autistic, they were like, no, you're not. I'm like, I am. I'm clinically diagnosed. I am. So, um, you know, a lot of people didn't didn't know what autism is. Um, a lot of people think that only children are autistic and they think that when you grow up, you grow out of it, but you don't. You're, you're autistic uh, your entire life. Wow. Hmm. You, oh, it looked like you had a question. Oh, okay. Wow. Um, so do you have like an av like oh my god advocacy why am I struggling with that word advocacy like platform speaking of struggling with words <laughs> <laughs> no, she, she knows where I'm going oh, with that girl. fucking what? measure for measure shit oh yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> that was tough. That was tough. I don't like Shakespeare I didn't like this one monologue in our scene we had to do first uh-huh. i felt some type of way because i wanted to be a mermaid and he changed our scene but Damn. anyway <laughs> we did. We loved the first yes i, I, I was like no the bastard child of hades but i was a mermaid okay go ahead. damn that's fucked up you took away your mer- <laughs> you took away your my tail. mermaid dreams <laughs> hey it's never too late <laughs> right? maybe that could be another book maybe i mean it's possible you know why not you just start drawing it. we'll fund it and we'll 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 make it the dying industry films Little Mermaid. <laughs> Nothing to do with the Disney version at all. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to get sued. We'll follow it exactly line by line, but just change like one thing. Um, my question was, what is it? It's advocacy. Why do I? I do this too with certain words. Like it's videographer, but I keep saying videographer, and that's supposed to be my job title. So imagine how confident people are when they hire me, and I say, "Hi, I'm the videographer." They're like, <laughs> "Jesus Christ." We're paying him how much? Um, is that just through the books? Do you have like a specific platform that you speak at um, or through social media? I know you were invited on like a million podcasts and yeah, two um, trillion TV network I, things. I speak um, to a lot of, um, lately I've been speaking to a lot of um, colleges, okay. but it's like on the private side. It's not like open to the public. Uh-huh. So I've been doing that. Um I use social media is my biggest platform for advocacy. Yeah. Um, so I just get up and post all my shit. Um, but lately I've been doing like a lot of um, work with like um, educators mm-hmm. and people in the medical field because they're they're trying to do better at learning from people who are actually autistic and learning from our experiences instead of just like treating us like lab rats and observing yeah. you know they want to they want to speak to us they want to learn about our experiences from us not just um you know watch observe and then tell people um what they came up with they would they want to hear it from us so gotcha. I've, I've been working with um i'm working on a presentation now um, for some educators that I'll be presenting to them in about three weeks. So now, do that like the schools 
Do you reach out to them or they reach out to you? Um, they reach out to me. Wow, that's gangster. That's pretty cool. <laughs> oh, you guys want to learn from me? Sit down. <laughs> that's what's up. Oh, yeah. It's really funny because sometimes, like, when I get, like, when they contact me or my publicist, I'm just like, um, she's got this a is pretty cool. Yeah, she's awesome. Her name is Hannah. <laughs> I don't have a publicist. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, that's, no, that's mad cool. Hell yeah. Well, you always got our support. If you ever need a film team to make a documentary about you, we can make a documentary. Or has that already been done already? That well, that doesn't mean it's not going to be done again. Oh, documentary too. Do it. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Spencer, say slay. Come on. I know you want to say it. <laughs> do not. Do not. So on, our, on, on our mixer, there's a built in microphone for like whoever's recording if they need to like, no, add that. It's so fucking loud though so if he does it do you want to do it do it fuck it (laughs) it's not loud obviously but through the headphones it's like and the people who are gonna be when you listen to this back you'll know exactly what we're talking about it records on all eight channels so (laughs) it just goes oh like just blast speaking of having a blast i've been having a blast on this me too you've been a, a great guest way better than our last guest you're a great host, but um, that's really? not nice. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Have I, am I one of the better podcast hosts? Of course. Or are you just saying that? No, you really are. I can't wait. The next podcast she goes on to, she's going to be like the last guest. I mean, the last host that I was a like, guest No, on. because like sometimes like I've, I've been on podcasts, like one of the worst podcasts I did, they sent me the questions and we literally just went down the line Ugh. of the questions and those are like kind of, those are harder for me it's yeah. easier like how we're having like a conversation those are easier for me i felt like i was like in school doing like a standardized test yeah i was always curious when i i actually have never read this book this is here out of <laughs> complete irony maybe i should but um when i started the podcast I was like, I'm gonna. I have a whole format of questions, da, da, da. but then after the first one we recorded with our boy Ronnie, shout out to Ronnie, I was like, no, 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 this has to just be like, cause you, you can't like, unless it's for a test or, an, some sort of assignment. I guess you only. I guess that is a, whatever. Um, see, sometimes I get in my own head. I'm like, how am I delivering these things? Like I did in the last episode and every episode in between. But absolutely. I feel like the best way it is loose like a conversation because in real life, a real life podcast with no microphones, just people hanging out. You're not gonna have a list of things you're gonna say to like yeah, your dad the, when you wake up in the morning. There or, was you know no, what I mean? there was like no room to like elaborate on anything. Yeah. There was like no room to like. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it, yeah. it was just like sh- a straight shot. So that was kind of like a a, dif- a difficult interview for me. I've been interviewed like that. I it was is. interviewed by somebody <laughs> who shall remain nameless. And the questions were so like one after the other. But there was just like a the way he would say him would be like, who are you? No. Where are you from? <laughs> yeah. And it was just like like when, when I was sent the questions, I thought it was just going to be like a guide. Yeah. I didn't know those were just going to be line like, by line. Yeah. And I was just mm. like, I'm um, OK. All right. Other than, other than like, I'm still learning as as a host. I mean, you talk to me outside of cameras and microphones being rolling. I will spiral sometimes, and I'll be like, I have to just get back to what the hell I'm talking about because then I become too self aware that I'm talking. His father, Mr. Conti, is been like good podcast host. Just talks, says a question, and shuts the fuck up. <laughs> so I try to do that, but then I get so excited to talk. Like even right now, I'm mad, like excited to just have you on and then talk about these things. What? Just making sure you know he hasn't actually listened I, to this. I okay, like, all right. He's saying that about other podcasts. Okay, his notes on. So he's podcasts. a fake fan. <laughs> no, he hasn't actually said Mike needs to do this. You oh, know? I know, yeah, I know. Yeah. It's just like yeah. kind of a bit. Yeah, yeah. His his dad, the whole Conti family. He's got like an army of family members, and they're all. Well, I have a big family, so I can't talk about anyone. All right. We My won't. grandmother um, had 10 kids. Okay. And um, she had three sets of twins. Wow. And my mother was a twin, and then two of my um, aunts had twins. Do you so. have any siblings? Yes, I do. Uh, how, how many siblings? Do you uh, have? A brother and a sister. Brother and a sister? Yes. Right. I got one brother. He sucks. <laughs> he's all right. He just became a father recently, so he's like full blown dadding it. What do your siblings do? Are they phenomenal too? Or are they yeah, just... they are. All right, okay. They just do their own things. Just... This is about me today. Don't this, is about, them. this is about Ayana. I'm sorry <laughs> I asked that. 
I'm just slowly be, be sliding down the list of podcast hosts of podcasts you've appeared on. But you know what? There's only one podcast that has a built-in game show. Probably not. But okay. ours does. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time. You know what it's time for? It's time for Ballin' At What Cost. Y'all making me nervous. Okay. That's all right. No, well, you'll when this comes out, you'll know why. So here's how Ballin' At What Cost works. I'm going to list three items. Okay. And all you have to do is list them from least expensive to most expensive. Okay. We're not going to tell you the number, just like you wouldn't tell us how old you are because you're years old. So our items are Prisma Color Pencils. It's 150 count in the tin. We'll add the picture and post. My favorite children's book ever. If you give a mouse a cookie, hardcover edition. Are you familiar? Nope, but I'm listening. <laughs> You've never read to, if, if you give a mouse a cookie? Yo. Wow, we gotta get you on that book, stat. And what's the third item? Prada glasses, 52 millimeter in green. Kara picked that one. All right. All right, so we got the Prada glasses, a hardcover of <laughs> If You Give a Mouse a Cookie, and the 150 count of the colored pencils. Um, hmm. Well, you know, those colored pencils is expensive, they but, sure are. um, so we know the glasses are the most expensive. Um, but that hardcover book, depending on what year it came out, and if it's a collector's edition, that might be more expensive than the expensive as Prismacolor. I believe it's a standard edition. Oh, okay. So I would yeah. say that's the, the the least expensive, and then the colored pencils, and then the glasses. Is that your final answer? Those are my final answers. Confidence. Spencer? You're 100% right. 100 really? Right. Absolutely. All right. Three across the board. If you give a mouse a cookie, hardcover, ten dollars and eighty-five cents, and then the colored pencils were a hundred and eighty dollars. Yeah, and that, I know, you know how I know those are expensive because I got the markers, and them shits is expensive. How much were the markers? The markers were about two twenty-five for a hundred and twenty-five. Jesus, fuck. A hundred and twenty-five um, pieces. <laughs> God damn. Well, I guess you use it. Yeah, I use them. So. Yeah, <laughs> that's something I would buy. Like, I'm totally going to lock in. Like, when you first artist. said Prismacolor, I'm like, are they asking me this because I'm an artist? Yeah, we try I'm... to keep it curated to <laughs> oh, the okay. guests. But I don't know. Like, sometimes I just want to throw a wrench in there and be like, guess You know what's funny wrench. about those sunglasses? Uh -huh. When I was about eight years old, mm -hmm. my dad bought me, like, a pair of, like, $200 sunglasses because he couldn't tell me no and I was like I was eight why didn't put those shits back he was <laughs> like because we don't live in lack I was like I would have said no put those back <laughs> and got some $10 glasses and kept it moving would have got them fashion over glasses <laughs> for free shipping Plus oh they harass you so much don't they harass you <laughs> if you like this is gonna your item's gonna sell out here's an extra 10% off <laughs> you'll unsubscribe and then you wanna go shop again and, back up and, you and then they start harassing. I had to mute them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to block them. Block them <sighs> All right. Well, Ayana, congratulations for winning ball on at what cost. <sighs> on to the next segment. Let me not get too happy because I'm supposed to start losing. <laughs> no, it's all good. It's all good. I, as the host of ball on at what cost, that was like a another project that we were doing that fell off because. Like most things, if you ever decide to get into film and television, really strongly reconsider it. No, I'm just kidding. Um, scheduling things, getting everybody together is always very difficult and something Spencer and I became very aware of and Michael and Miles um, as well. Well, I know like it is hard, hard to, to get people together. Yeah, because um, I was writing a short film about a little girl with autism and yeah. it was just like so hard to get people to commit and I was just like, fuck all of you. No. <laughs> it makes you want to scream. It does. It's just like, what do you... It's like, come on, just do this one thing. Because I'm the type of person, like, if you need me to do something, unless you're Spencer, if you need me to do something, <laughs> unless you're Robert Spencer's brother, if you need me to do something, like if you're Stephen Conti or Sophia Conti, I'm there. Anyway, closing this one out, um, what do you got coming up next? Wait, wait, how, what's the next thing on the creative horizon for you? Um, well, I will be doing a TED Talk. So I'm preparing for that. <laughs> Dude. Hold on, and... hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. 
A what? A TED Talk. You know, thank you for coming to my No, TED I know. Talk. <laughs> I know exactly what it is. You're just uh, casually dropping bombs. You did a TED Talk. No, I'm preparing. Preparing to do a yes. TED Talk. Sorry, preparing to do a TED Talk. Yeah, it's not going to be for a couple of months. Okay. But I'm preparing to do that. Um, as I said, I'm preparing to do two more books with two separate authors. Uh-huh. And I'm trying to release at least five more books that I'm writing myself and, of course, illustrating myself. And I'm going to be back in class with you guys. So. <laughs> and you get to hang out with us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> in order from most important, obviously, being hanging out with us. And then the TED Talk is like, now, that's amazing. Holy. Where, where's, you got to, if it's local or around the area, you got to, I want to go to the TED Talk. I've never Of been course. I'll keep you guys updated. I'll be like, yeah. Oh, can we bring signs like it's a yeah. baseball game? Just have pictures of you. That'd be so fun. Imagine just like pre-gaming, like it's a, ba- a football game to a TED Talk. Like wearing a football jersey. That's That'd be so funny. Um, one last question for you, and then we'll we'll close this this bad boy out. Um, any advice for those who may be dealing with autism, maybe recently diagnosed or long-term diagnosed, especially um, as a black woman with autism? Anything you would say to somebody that might be similar to you listening to this? that needs to hear it to keep going to keep doing what they got to do um i would definitely just um say to uh be 100 percent yourself um try to find your community um i didn't know anyone who was a black autistic woman until i got on tiktok um i sometimes you have to go online and find your community um don't put limits on yourself and definitely don't let anybody else put limits on yourself if you have a dream to do something go for it this is it's it's people like you the reason why i started this podcast and no (laughs) no fucking joke um all right there's one last thing to do i mentioned this earlier all the guests on this podcast do have a chance to uh walk away with something cool or something smart financially um so ayana you can have ten dollars or what's in the mystery box those question marks are really cool we're going, um, all right. I'm going to go with the mystery box. going with the mystery box? Producer, you put the mystery box item in here? I actually don't know what's in this this week. I'm not even kidding. Oh, sounds like I might have broke it. Here you go. You may take that and open it. Me reusing a Martha Stewart liquid death box. Martha Stewart? Remember she was in jail? Yeah. What is it? Um. What is it? I don't know. Those are Spencer's car. You get Spencer's car. Spencer's car. What, what year do you, you get the rights to own Spencer's car? You get... I'm not really sure what this means because I don't know how to drive. <laughs> oh, you don't know how to drive? You can sell it. You can get like 30 <laughs> bucks for it probably on, on, on the car market. It's a 2017 Chevy Sonic. You, trust me, you don't need a license to drive it. It's basically a golf cart with doors. Uh, it's yours. <laughs> Spencer's giving away his car. You can't go over 55 because it will overheat. <laughs> Uh, but it, it's got like, it's got like really good space for stuff, man. It's like, you can like watch the stars through the trunk. That's what Spencer would probably say. Um, okay. Yeah. You, you have a car now. Okay. All right. Ayana, <laughs> thank you for coming on the thank show. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. It's been a phenomenal episode, I think. Thank you so much. I had and, a great time. And anybody that wants to reach out to you on your platforms, go ahead. Free plug. Free advertisement. Uh, yes, I'm Phenomenally Autistic across all social media. Instagram, TikTok. Are you on X YouTube, as well? YouTube. Yes, I'm on X. Okay. It sucks now, though, but I'm, not, I'm there. All right. She's there. So go find her for anybody that's out there that wants to hang out with this really cool person, this phenomenal person. I'm jealous. Because I want to do a TED Talk. I don't know about what, but I'm sure I'll figure it out if I ever get invited to do one. Ayana, thank you so thank much you. for being on here. Good luck with Spencer's car. <laughs> we'll teach you how to drive. It's no big deal. Uh, and thank you to Spencer and Kara for being my producing team. I'm Mike, as always. Like and subscribe. Follow us on Instagram. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Leave a comment. Let us know what you think about this episode. And what do you, let us know what you think about this studio and what we can do to make some changes and some improvements. Besides you, Miles, if you're listening, don't want to hear it. I'm just kidding. (laughs) I want to hear it. I really do. I'm just kidding. No, I don't. All right. Peace out, everybody. Um, Just a quick thought. Do you want to pass and try to make it sound in...